I'm the guy who invented the thing that's gonna take us out of this place. If you could read my mind, you would know what kind of pajamas I want when it comes to bedtime. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Footy, 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 footy pajamas that let me be what I want to be. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's record a podcast. <laughs> Dead. You're sitting in your own pee now. <laughs> here's, here's my thing. Here's my thing. Um, <laughs> you just want to play rock and sock for an <laughs> Intros usually do this thing where they get like a conversation started. Ian, you barely suck at this game. I've been thinking about it for six episodes. All right. Usually an intro is a thing that like it's a conversation gun or like we're like bantering back and forth. Which I understand, I haven't always delivered on or it's like a funny <laughs> joke. But like how how am I what am I supposed to say? Cause also I don't from, know. from the angle, because I always look off to this way, the, it sort sure of just looks like I watch Ian's ding dong <laughs> as he pees. Yes. Yes it does. <laughs> okay, and, right. and then we record a podcast. No and I don't in all seriousness though, Marcus, I got a song for us though, because we're total dinguses for not ever doing this song that we both know, you know, for song intros. I hope we get it. I am an astronaut in search of an alien race. Oh, what is this? I'm a top dollar attorney defending a celebrity's oh, case. I know what it is. I don't know, the, I don't know the verses. I'm an archaeologist. Uncovering an ancient face. I'm the guy who invented the thing that's gonna take us out of this place. If you could read my mind, you would find what pajamas I want when it comes to bedtime. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Footy, 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 footy. We'll have you guys vote. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll have you guys vote. Text six 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 six, and then text the number of the devil. Text that number, and if you want us to go with intro number one, text one. If you want us to go with intro number two, text two. Oh, oh, and actually, guys, you can text in. I downloaded the texting app. I'll have to give you the information. You can download it as well. You can text in. So that we don't give away our regular numbers, of course. You can text in uh, we'll skip to the special time. app. <laughs> you can text in, you know, votes, comments, whatever, to uh, 516-717-4345. It will It'll be, be in the description. It'll be in the description below. I just want to throw that out there. We have that option now. Also, hold up, Ian. What is this show? This is Let Me Pitch This To You, where two people come together and they try to pitch ideas that they uh, came up with in the past week, or in this case, a month. <laughs> um, that's fair. I'll take the blame of that. My life got kind of crazy, and then I kind of dropped the ball on everything. Oh. Um, whoa, whoa, keep it PG. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wiener jokes, and those kind of are for the pre-show, and maybe if we do an after show. That's not a wiener joke. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's you know what a <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, hold on. If I, if, I make, if I make a joke about like the upper half of my leg is yes, upper your inner thigh, thigh the, counts. No, yes, upper, joke what, if, what if it's like about like my hip? It's in the same general area. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so hold on. It's a proximity. So hold on. So if I make a joke about my phone and my phone sitting on my leg right now, that's inappropriate. But if I hold my phone here and I make a joke about my phone, is it still your inappropriate? Phone's not part of your body. Because it's not. It's not weird it's not by, Your phone's not biologically attached. You don't know. You don't know everything about me, Ian. <laughs> I think that's a little judgmental, to be honest. Are you saying? Never mind.
Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe my thumb's my other wiener, Ian. <laughs> okay. People. I'm Ian, this is Marcus. As always, we also have Jeremy uh, here with us someday, today. Someday we'll get him on camera also. That's okay. I kind of like having like other people in the show, but they're not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an extra person to bounce off of, but also the attention never goes away from the money makers. <laughs> So, like, I've listened to other podcasts like that where they just have people in the room that contribute to the show, but they're not, like, on the show every time, so they're not on camera. Um, we'll get a Jeremy camera also eventually. Yeah, we might get Jeremy's own microphone, too, so it sounds better for him. Yeah, so if we make a really good joke, we have to stop laughing just so, he, just so Jeremy can. <laughs> so we can, get, we can get that good can laughter in. Do you have an idea? Um, I kind of have a little bit of an idea. Do you want to go first or do you want to go second? How good is your idea? Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> it is it is the most how do I say this? The most Marcus idea. I don't so essentially I mean nobody else is gonna like this, but if somebody else made this thing, it'd be one of my favorite things that exists. <laughs> so like everybody like who uh, like watches our show be like it sucks, but I would be like, whoa, that's dope if I was watching our show. Okay. Um So I, I think I'll... it's good, but like our audience won't. <laughs> Okay. I'll be the judge. How, ma- how many ideas have, have we done that our idea that our audience actually thought was good? Uh, I, mean, I don't think that's one of the criteria if here. If you're asking me, I've done one good pitch out of 30 episodes. 31 episodes, because an episode that's recorded hasn't been posted. This is episode 32. Yeah. You've done at least seven. I had them counted out the other day. So we have did eight I, good ideas. Did I do seven good ideas? I, I was, was going to say like ideas. two or three. I've liked a lot, at least seven of your ideas. I really liked liked your... I've uh, liked one of my ideas ever. A couple of, like, your one with the the whole space um, conspiracy thing with the moon. That one was good. (laughs) 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 That was the first episode that I wrote, like, notes for, also. I think that was the first one we did at my house. Um, It was good. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about new ideas. All right. What are you bringing to the table this week, episode 32 of the Great Great Podcast by Great Let People for Great People? You. Let me pitch this to you. Brought to you by the Imagination Warehouse. Finger guns. I hate finger guns <laughs> so much. <laughs> I do that just to stick it to you. <laughs> just to, just to piss you That's off. why I cough into the mic. Yeah, ha. Joke's on you. The mic's up there now. <laughs> I kid you not. If I get a cold again, I will stand up and walk up to the mic and cough into it. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so my idea is a, a cartoon. Uh, it's actually an anime. This is the first idea that I pitched ever. Hold on, hold on. But I kind of wanted to be anime. I think t- technically to be an anime, you have to be Japanese and it has to be made over there first. So like, I don't, I don't think. So for instance, no, I'm pitching the idea for it to be an anime. I'm not gonna actually make this idea. <laughs> I'm so, so in I'm fiction just of my idea that I'm pitching. <laughs> It's an anime. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't know we were gonna no, get that meta about it. No, and also it's just being a hole. So like, <laughs> I, know. I know you were just. Um, no, I mean, and that's just—it's obviously a cartoon. I was Im- imagining it as an anime, an anime style anime. thing. So like, I mean, technically, yeah. Avatar: The Last Airbender is not an anime, but, but it's kind of anime, anime style. Here, but yeah. it, it's supposed. It's kind inspired. Of like, it's anime adjacent. Yeah, kind of that style of cartoon. I got you. Um. And, uh, and actually, the reason why I was thinking anime was what inspired this, or what I was thinking of when I wrote it, was... Avatar The Last Airbender. No. Dragon Shoot, and now I can't think of the movie. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Z. No, it's a movie. Dragon, um, Dragon Ball Z the movie. Dragon it's an uh, anime about the the girl that goes into, like, this ghost town, ghost, or whatever. No? Oh, Ghost, ghost in the Shell. Shell. No, 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 no. It's an anime. Not that's also not an anime. Howl's movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know what that is. Not Howl's Moving Castle, but that might be it. No, I think it was. Okay. Anyway, whatever. I'm going to try and look this up. So I was Ian, thinking Ian of it. Was, oh, Ian was in mid-fever dream and thought he watched an anime that doesn't exist and got inspired to write this. Okay. Okay. So, no, I was inspired. <laughs> okay, I keep going. <laughs> no, I, I put the wrong thing in my, my vape rig. <laughs> I just shoved some pot leaves in my vape rig. I don't think that's how that works, Ian. No, I put the wrong... Is that how that works? I shouldn't have ordered the juice from California. <laughs> or Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> my bad. I think mean, it's legal, but okay. let's keep going. Um, so... 
the story of a young boy named Yeshua and his little sister Heidi. Oh, cool. So one of them's adopted. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Um, or, or it was one of those, one of the parents is really creative, and the other parent <laughs> isn't, and they were like, the deal was, you name one, I name the other, and we only have two kids. So it's like, there's this kid, his name is Jonathan, here's my kid no. named Rain. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, Yeshua and Heidi. Okay. I don't know, that was just I'll what I came up with. I'll remember okay. those for sure. Um, one of them. Two children, their, their brother and sister, didn't say that? Yeah. yeah. They're playing out What's the age difference? Okay, so like... Maybe 12 and 7. Okay. Um, so Yeshua's like 12, like, very like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes, very imaginative and creative, but kind of, he's kind of growing up a little bit, kind of learning about the real world and piecing all that together. And Heidi's very much like little, like, you know, those annoying little kids, like little siblings that just like, they're still at that phase where they will say something and it just doesn't even make sense. Kind of okay. type of thing. That's kind of where each one comes from. So like where we were... Yesterday. A week ago. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, they're playing outside, playing hide and go seek, whatever, whatever the kids play nowadays. Um, and, uh. Innuendo, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep going. Don't kids worry about play it. outside, still. <laughs> anyway. So they were checking Twitter. So, like, okay, so this is, <laughs> I have it written out as a script, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out. So, like, they're playing, they're, they're playing outside in the woods. And, uh, they, oh, sorry, my phone just vibrated. That freaked me out. <laughs> Ian got scared at the idea that phones vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they're playing and they stumble across, uh, this, uh, like, weird light thing across this valley. You know, it's just kind of, I couldn't think of an intro. They kind of go running up to it. And, uh, um. Uh, they're at the base of like this mountain because they're in a valley. They're in like this very mountainous region, and uh, they uh, they meet this uh, guy on horseback, this like medieval-looking guy named Ryder. And uh, uh, Ryder takes them uh, into this uh, very different village, and I don't want to say it's a different world, but it's kind of like hidden from this world. And uh, they pass through this gate, they go into this village, and uh, um, they start discovering this village. And um, the premise of it is um, they befriend everyone, and they kind of this kind of becomes like this little secondary home to them. But they start noticing all this bad stuff going on, and um, they start discovering that everyone there's like. There's weird glitches here and there. You know, remember in like the Matrix when he sees the black cat and he's like, oh, deja vu. And it's like, oh, that's a really bad thing. That's like a glitch in the system. Mm -hmm. They start seeing all these like weird glitches and like people, in the, in the like someone will say something and then someone else that they see down there will say like the exact same thing. And um, they learn that everyone in this town is the same person, but they're all, it's all like one spirit. If that makes sense. Like, this town is literally a spirit that is, like, make, making of all these different characters. I mean, for sure. Different people. For sure an anime-esque idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was thinking anime. Um, when does somebody say or do something, like, a little bit pervy, but everybody acts like it's okay? <laughs> that's, that's also a staple of anime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. Um, and then they start discovering, they start, like, uh, figuring out, like, what they can, you know, uh what they need to do to, to put a stop to this because they, they start finding out that this spirit is like, um, uh, like he's killing people in the real world and then bringing them back into this village as like his spirit, if that makes sense. Okay. And so then it kind of goes into them, uh, like, how do you combat that? And like, how do yeah, how do you combat? How do you like, combat somebody who is everybody? Yeah. And that's as far as I got. So, like, if we kind of want to hash it out from there or end it there. Um, I mean, do you want it to end happy or do you want it to end sad? <laughs> like, if you want to end sad, then they just get murdered in the town, become the spirit, too, and go, like, murder their family as well. Yeah, that's why I don't want it to end that way. If you want it to end happy, then, like, 
I guess these kids are gonna have to murder a bunch of people in the town, which I guess also ends sad in a way. <laughs> but but they're but they're all spirits. Dead. That's the thing. They're all spirits. They already died once as well. They have but to. Like, they have to kill, discover the source kill, of the spirit. If you kill all of the spirits' vessels, does the spirit die? But see, that's just it. Is these people can't die? You can't kill them. Yeah. So, and so like they have, so that's the whole part. That's like kind of this adventure they have to go on is they have to discover what the source is of this spirit. They gotta be able to die. Put it in a special cool way. Ooh! Or do you want it in the most happy way? They don't kill anybody. No, they I kill, hate that. I they, hate that. No, <laughs> they kill the spirit. They find the source of the spirit. And then all the people get their lives and bodies back. Their, their original spirits return. And then it ends the most happy. Something kind of like that. But a few people need to die. Because I hate it. Because like, screw them. When, like, screw nobody, die. when nobody dies in What's the story. What's the stakes, then? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and they can't be fake deaths either. I th those are my least favorite things. So like, yeah. if they find let's say they find a way to kill some of these spirit inhabited people, when they go kill the actual spirit, those people stay dead. It's not like those those people's spirits still return. Yeah. So like, how about we can play like with this like? There's like essentially like life to bot. Like there's like a a body has life separate from the spirit inside of it. So like you can switch in and out spirits all you want but if you kill the body the body stays dead yeah. so like that way if they kill one of the bodies the spirit stays alive because he's in a bunch of different bodies and everything and he also has his own source that he can come out so even if they kill the bodies the spirit comes out but they also don't want to kill as many bodies as possible because once the body's dead the original spirit can't return and re-inhabit yeah. its life yeah okay I like that now you say something clever and cool, because I just thought of <laughs> <laughs> No, so like... Yeah, something like... Yeah. So, do we want to like... I wanted to get very... Kind of an origin? The, yeah. I wanted to get kind of like... Kind of magical, too. Like, some... Like, not that they had, like... I mean, I was assuming he was a ghost. Like, well, yeah, it's a ghost. It's so a haunted is... ghost thing that, like... I was assuming we'd get into the origin of the spirit and why does the spirit yeah, like, so what's evil the and like, why, yeah. like it doesn't, like what's the rule, it's like, what's the, have you guys seen Supernatural, what's the dumb Supernatural rule, no. this show sucks, like, I didn't like, get into it, no. let's not get into Supernatural, but like, what's the rule from Supernatural where they're like, I don't remember. if the, if the un, oh, what, I forgot, whatever, but like, if the ghost dies in a bad, aggressive way, or if somebody dies in a bad, aggressive way, that's what creates the evil spirit or whatever, yeah. so like, are we going to, like, come up with, like, an origin story for the spirit? You could do something the like, yeah, evil like, and sad? you could go, or you could do something, like, sticking with the anime route, like, um, I don't watch a lot of anime, but one that I did watch is Full Metal Alchemist. You know how, like, when they try to bring back the dead, mm -hmm. all the, you know, they yeah. lost their body. It could be something like that, where it's, like, someone tried to, you know, mess with the spirit world, and... Okay. Yeah, Somebody's dying. Yeah. So like way back in time, somebody's dying, mm -hmm. and they turn to mysticism to so like uh, they're beyond the help of modern medicine. Mm -hmm. So they turn to mysticism to try to do this, and this is going to draw a little bit from a comic book that I recently read, where essentially, let's say there's like entities or like lowercase deities okay. that like have like different powers and things. And he finds the one who's in charge of life and death, and he's trying to summon it and trick this thing into not letting him die, because he doesn't okay. want to die, right? And he gets the deity there, like he does it, and then mm -hmm. they, um, essentially, he has the deity trapped, and they start negotiating, because he's like, I, I want to go be free. Mm -hmm. But also, like, screw you because you trapped me here, and so, like, I don't want to give you what you want because you trapped me, but I also want to be free. So they, they essentially, very Princess Bride-esque, in okay, initiate yeah. a game of wits. Yeah. And they back and forth a little bit, and he gets tricked to where he essentially commits to a deal of eternal life, or not having a... a, a not having a body bound by normal means to where in theory he can live. Like, he can, somebody can find the spirit and murder him, but, like, he's not going to die of old age. And he's not, he's going to exist kind of outside of time, essentially, or something mm -hmm. like that. But he gets tricked into that to where rather than having a normal mortal body or something like that, he becomes, like, he's tied to 
I don't know, like whatever, a, like a crucifix or something if you want to get really weird and anime and spiritual about it. Yeah. So he's like, the spirit is tied to this crucifix, which over time he learns he can project himself into a person. And like, we can show this over time. So like, he usually learns as like somebody walks by and they're like, oh cool, and they, they, they take the cross with them. He inhabits that person's body. Okay. So he's like, I have control of this. And then over time learns like, hold on, I can split it. So he inhabits two people at the same time. And then it happens three people and four and kind of learns like, oh, I I can be so much more than I thought I could originally. And then we can give him an almost noble goal, but also evil goal. Like what if he wants to try and like fix the whole world by inhabiting everyone? I was gonna argue like a noble so like let's say like I mean, he wants to essentially screw over the deity that screwed him, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, I need to inhabit enough people. And get good enough at this, because like we can also like it takes a mental strain. He's controlling more than one person, so like it is difficult for him. So he is a skill that he's learning. Mm -hmm. And like the reason that he only brings so many people in at a time and doesn't happen just all nonstop is because he doesn't want to bring more people until he can effectively control the people that he's inhabiting at the time. So his goal, and then we can have like a bunch of stories going on at once that kind of climax in like mm -hmm. one big conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. His goal. <clears throat> is to get enough people together to re-summon the deity and kill him. Like, screw you, you freaking screwed me over for the rest of my life by doing this to me. The kid's goal is to free all the people from the spirit world, and the deity can also be, like, trying to do something weird. And then, like, we can have, like, three different things going on, which is a very anime thing to do also. Yeah. So, yeah. like, a lot going on that is all off the rails buck wild that kind of climaxes in like one big showdown where like let's say the deity not the deity the spirit has to like for whatever reason he needs his spirit to like be cl we can like make up a, a proximity thing mm -hmm. to where like if the thing if somebody is too far away from him he can't have it anymore like or he loses control yeah. But let's say they become kind of mindless, like a monster or like an animal or something per se, because their original spirit doesn't return. Okay. So like if somebody gets too far out of control, it's just a wandering husk that kind of is like an animal that reacts on instinct. So the only place that they can trap a deity, let's say, is like in this special place. So he has to, essentially one of the people he's inhabiting puts the crucifix around their neck. So that brings him out to the open to be attacked and stuff. So then our kid protagonist, who, I feel like we're gonna give magic power, like let's say like the little girl eventually gets born like, magic so, power. Yeah, like that's what it, Like Ben 10 uh, Yeah, thing. I was gonna say something like that, yeah, like they... Like remember in Ben 10 when like, Gwen gets cool magic powers? Yeah. Kinda like that, and then like... But like, what if like, where she like starts like studying stuff, she gets really into it, and she like, starts like learning spells. And so, so it's not yeah. like she just... Yeah. Yes, yeah, like, oh, essentially, I'm just, I'm, I'm also like, let's say they age some over time. Yeah. Like I'm assuming it's a, a long story, so like, she yeah, kind like, of ages, like she, like, she ages a little bit and studies magic and gets good yeah. at it. And let's say he like, I don't know, picks up a sword and like learns how to teach himself. Like he learns how to fight with a sword. Really like baller, like anime baller yeah. style, right? So like, then we have like everything climaxing where there's so many deity to kill him. The deity's like, what the frick? Like I'm a deity fight, like what? But there's also like a ton of people by this point. And then we have these two kids who went to screw over the spirit because like screw you but we also can't do it with the deity here because he's gonna be ticked and then like fighting us like we don't want like to kill the spirit have the deity be like screw like humanity and kill all of us and also at the same time the kids want to do this with killing as few of the inhabited people as possible that way people's spirits can return to their bodies after they kill this bad spirit yeah that way it's super convoluted in anime and like up its own butt, but like also kind of cool. But okay. if you think about it too hard, normal people will be like, screw this, this is dumb. Yeah. Yeah. I like that for a backstory. That's good. Now, I like that. My question to you is you do know what Yeshua means, right? Nope. No idea. I just thought Joshua and I thought, well, let's make it like, you know, because like Jay like, can be pronounced okay. with a... Why Yeshua or whatever? Because isn't that Joshua from the Bible was like Yeshua or something? And Joshua is also a different translation for Jesus. Oh. And Jesus well. also is the rescuer, redeemer, deliverer. 
So that is what Yeshua means. So even better than <laughs> the crucifix. <laughs> even better. Even better. So I was like, well, as soon as you mentioned the name, I was just like, he it knows what he's familiar. pulling from, right? It sounded familiar, but I couldn't have told you that's what that meant. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why. That's why it sounds familiar. Okay, fair enough. Church, church background and stuff. But it's like, hmm, okay. So, which is why when I say crucifix, Jeremy goes, yeah, that, that totally tracks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking an ambulance. I was going to say like an ambulance or something. <laughs> Jeremy probably thought I knew what it meant. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, all of the chat's like, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then you went along with it too, so it was like, like oh, they know, you, it, they know what it means. They're smart. They're not dangus as old as all they are. They're not. They just, they just lucked into it. Cool, like always. Don't you just love when you just luck into something? <laughs> that's how I just. Uh, that's how I go through life. You just luck through everything. Lucking into something. The Marcus Nip story. <laughs> <laughs> lucking into life. <laughs> Look into no, life. Wait, 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 the Marcus Nip story. Isn't that technically also for Gump though? I guess kind of. Because Forrest Gump, he just lucked into everything he kind of. Yeah, but Forrest I've never Gump seen, like, is probably the I've never seen TV Forrest character. Gump. You've never seen Forrest play. Gump? That has got to hey, be Joe. immediately. Hey, Joe. Hey, yes. Joe. Forrest Gump has got to be on our podcast. Ne- or you should just go watch one. it right now. Very next show. That you Here's the thing. On. Netflix added a bunch of movies that I was looking through the other day, and I was like, oh, show- oh, I have a podcast where I'm supposed to watch famous old movies. Like, I almost watched Godfather the other day. I almost watched Ooh. Men in Black the other day. Like, you've never seen Men in no, Black? There's another movie that I was like, I gotta, and then I literally would like watch, I was like, I was like, these are all, I can't watch them because I have a podcast. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, just, you guys gotta post that. I think yeah. that's a good idea. Worth the hype. Check it out if Marcus ever posts it. Worth the hype. Joe has it. It's not on me. <laughs> That's okay, Joe. I know how you feel. I don't get these up on time, so. Oh man, we should bring Joe to, in on and all in fair, on this in show. In all fairness, though, Joe has a full time job and a wife and a child, so. That's fair. Does Joe have the? Uh, Ian, Ian has a thirty hour a week job and apparently six seasons of One Mutual to watch every single week. <laughs> so like. <laughs> That's why Ian doesn't get our show up. Well, well what's the what's the TV show you're watching now though? Is that Scrubs? Scrubs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I know I'll get this show up. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but yeah, so I, I there was just a short little idea that I had, but that's what like I, I like hashing it out like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a I like the background. It's the I like it's collaboratively creating a lot. Yeah. Yeah. The, the typical improv, yes and, right? Yes and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, it is, this is, I guess, a very improv show because sometimes Ian says, here's my idea, I don't have an end. Marcus? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. cool, and? Yeah. That could be a whole new show, like, one person gives a beginning, the other person gives an end. So let, let, let me tell that you. That could be a, it, like a special type of episode. That could be, yeah. Guys, let me tell you, as, as we were debating going on earlier, I thought of another podcast show that I'll have to tell you out without the camera rolling because sure? it, because it is an improv type thing and it's just like that'd be oh, fun. I really you like you need this. to get a show started because I mean you're kind of essentially part of the yeah I'm gonna leave the camera here. I've been uh, waiting for that. You could use also, really, you could literally use your phone. I know. Side it's note, probably a better camera. Side note. Yeah. I have been writing more stand up also. Oh. Nice. Is it good this time? <laughs> Here's, oh, the thing. No, here's the thing, I figured out, the problem is, not that the jokes aren't good from the last one, my joke to time between joke ratio is off on like all of the episodes but one. Okay. So like one of them works fairly well and the other two have good jokes in them, there's just too much time between jokes to where like, mm-hmm. it's not yeah. witty enough. Yeah. You, you, you but need, it's also a work in progress, like, okay. You need a side, a, a, an off camera sound text to just insert laughs. <laughs> That way you know when I'm going. <laughs> so it's so it's like real stand up and so not just like not just in his basement recording on a camera. Because that's the joke for Marcus. The joke for Marcus is that I put on a suit and I get in front of the camera and I act like I'm doing actual stand up. Because like it'd be really easy for me to say, hey, here's some stand up ideas I have, and like look at the camera. Here's some ideas for like a stand up routine I have, and then tell jokes into yeah. a camera. That's really easy, and that's not funny to Marcus. The the joke to Marcus is I put on a suit and I walk in front of a wall and I pretend like I'm delivering actually stand up to actual people yeah. that's the joke for me that yeah. I think is funny yeah because it's only fair if I if other if I'm trying to make other people laugh I also get to make me laugh like, <laughs> I still, still think it's on funny a suit too that you, you put on a black suit 
in front of a black background. Yeah, that's that supposed to be bad. On that. It's so, supposed to be bad. So it's supposed to be just they like a whole Bob's head. Burgers episode about that. <laughs> yes, like, like it's just a floating head. I understand I'm not the most clever person, but guys, give me enough credit. Like, if I'm making a show that's supposed to be a little bit bad to the extent that I'm pretending to be my own fans clapping as I walk on to stream, mm -hmm. like, also give me enough credit to say, yes, I picked a back <laughs> black job in a black suit on purpose to be bad and dumb. Uh, uh, that's but. fair. Give me a little bit of credit. Yeah. Anyway, commercial break. Yeah, should we cut to a break? I don't know why you do that. Like, it, that doesn't help with cutting. So anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah. Do you have, do you, so well, let's talk about this. I'm assuming we're gonna get our lives back on track. And so, get the episode up. Yeah, well, like that. But also, I'm assuming music podcast. This yeah, I want to get back into the music podcast specifically for the summer. I kind of got out of it because it wasn't. It wasn't really coming together. It's like. Let's the, be real. Your last guest to, was really horrible. Got yeah, recorded. Ruined yeah. the thing. <laughs> Stupid Jeremy is on the show. Actually, that was a good episode. But the, like the first two episodes, like were kind of repetitive, and I think I need to work on just kind of writing it better. But I've I've been hashing it out, and I'm gonna get back into that, kind of relaunch that. Uh, so check that out. Potentially other ideas. Like I have, I'm not gonna say that's gonna be on the channel or anything, mm -hmm. but I do have ideas for things that could be on the channel eventually. Like I'm going to start testing out some some things. So like okay. be on the be on the lookout for some weird content. All right. Potentially hitting the channel soon. Also, as I already mentioned, more stand up. Expect that in the near future. Once right. I once I get 3 episodes fully written, I'm going to start recording them when we can post them and then I have a buffer to finish the last two of season 2. All right. Go on 5 5 episodes cool. seasons. Um if you want to if you want to, support us on Patreon. You can support the Imagination Warehouse. Do we actually have a Patreon donor? No, I was okay. totally BSing you. <laughs> I, was hoping, I was hoping we did. And then no, I'm, no. I was also, I Griffin also said, McElroy endorsed I us. Said, I also said, what are the odds that somebody does on Patreon? Would we haven't done anything in a month? <laughs> I know, right? Like, that'd be hilarious. But um, <laughs> It would be. Also, if you want to hear a good podcast that people apparently like, as opposed to this one, we don't have a name for it, but go to the uh, website, Whack Zucchini Matters. Zucchini Wiener Podcast. Go to the website, Whack Matters. Ian, we don't do wiener jokes on this show. Can we please keep it PG? What the frick? Hey, you're the one that made, it, um, made the joke earlier. You literally said, I dropped my balls on everything. <laughs> no. That's verbatim said. what you said. <laughs> verbatim. Ian okay. literally said, I put my balls on all, all right. this stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> verbatim. That's probably gonna have to get cut. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, what's going in there? Okay, I mean, I, I feel like more people will watch our show. More <laughs> 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 people will watch our show because Ian put his balls on everything. <laughs> it's gonna be the title of this. Ian, oh, Ian put his balls on everything. Please comments. watch. Oh, balls every. <laughs> That's the title of the episode. Ian's, Ian's, the title of the episode is Ian's Balls on Everything. Okay, but also, there's a podcast on Whack Matters that me and my brother have... It's probably pound for it's pound. It's really good, actually. It is pound for pound. You guys even review this show. My... F I think it's pound for pound the best podcast I've ever worked on. It's also, by far, the most successful podcast I've ever worked on. Well, how, so how many how views? Many, yeah, how many views? The highest Let Me Pitch This To You podcast is like 115. We posted this how many days ago? Like two days ago, me and Michael did, and we are at 400 something. Are you serious? So is this all just friends of Michael's that follow the It Black is friends Matters? of my mom and Amanda, because we posted on Facebook, zero traction. Michael and Amanda, or my mom and Amanda shared it, and then we got traction. <laughs> they care about us, but they have friends. Like, I share this, I share every episode on Facebook, no one followed, like, no one mm -hmm. likes it or anything. Yeah. They're anyway, just like, there's Ian and Mark just yeah. doing their dumb thing. Anyway, uh, check out that podcast. Are you going to put it on the Imagination it. Warehouse? No. You should. It's not my thing. It's me and Michael's thing. But okay. but I mean, that's your check thing it out. Right? It's a good. It's a good thing, and I'm a fan of it. I'm it a is. A, I, I watched some of it. I, I think pound some. for pound, it's worked out the best out of anything cool. I've ever worked on. But also, if you think about it, me and Michael, me and Michael have had, um, I don't know, roughly twenty years to work up a decent back and forth with each other. So it should be pretty. It should be pretty good. But that's fair. Whatever. Yeah. 
That's the front page now. Yeah. <laughs> you were you weren't kidding, were yeah, you? Yeah, no, I was I was dead serious. You yeah. a freaking it's a zucchini on the as a, the cover picture for your podcast. Yeah, it's a zucchini. Zucchini? Yeah, we rated a zucchini, so we put it as the thing. Okay. Also though, do you have anything else we want to pimp or do um, I not have to share my idea? Uh thanks to uh Tim for letting us use your uh, uh yeah, song thank you. Funny Pajamas. Um Thanks, Matt, for usually commenting. Yeah. Thanks, Jeremy, for giving us a host space. Yeah, and uh, being on the show. Oh, uh, no, not for that. But <laughs> no, just, for the, just for the space. That's fair. Mm. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeremy was so desperate to have friends, he gave us a thing for free, but he has to be in the recording session. <laughs> that was the deal we worked out. Like, so long as you guys let me be in there. Like yeah. and subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel, the give Imagination us, Warehouse. Give us cash money. Yes. Please give cash. I'm sorry, I've been watching a lot of Parks and Rec. That was my Tom Haverford impression. Please give us cash. Never mind. Forget that. Forget that. <laughs> Let's cut that. Let's cut it. <laughs> Back to our That's not even cut. All right, Marcus, what's your pitch? Okay, so have you heard of this? Um, it's the small indie musical off Broadway called The Less Miserables. <laughs> It sounds familiar. Some people have told me it's pronounced Les Miserables, and then I, oh. tell them, then I tell them, I can sound words out, don't step to me, please. Mm -hmm. I finished the dyslexia tutoring my mom gave me through, which means I'm cured of dyslexia. I'm not dyslexic anymore. That's how that works. Yeah. The Less Miserables. So, if The Less Miserables meets, have you heard of this TV show called Gallivant? No. Okay, so Gallivant is, um, the guy... It sounds familiar, but um, no. Uh, Lassiter from Psych is in it. Okay. But it's a, it's a medieval comedy musical written by the same people who wrote a lot of old school Disney stuff. So, like, the songs are really good, actually. And it's okay. really funny. It got canceled because nobody gave a crap. But it's hilarious. There's two seasons it's on Netflix. Check out Galavan. Alright. So, I want to make a sort of self serious thing. That is all, so like, when I say like the less miserables, I mean the whole thing is singing. It's a TV show. So it's a musical TV show, like Gallivant, but also it's like the less miserables where they, everything they sing, they sing everything. Okay. It's going to take place in New York City, and it's going to be about gangs and a gang war. Each gang is going to be championed by a different style of music. Okay. Because also, one of my favorite things that exists is um, genre mashups, like when bands like mm -hmm. collab with each other. Mm -hmm. and, like, and it's the thing is, is they almost always turn out really dope, but like they very rarely happen, which is a bummer to me, because like they always turn out dope, but they also don't always, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, so the whole thing is all musicals, and like each gang has their own type of music that they kind of champion, and their own goals. And take place in different parts of the city, but anytime like the gangs fight or there's gang war stuff going on, the, the genres will mesh during the fight scene, right? So they're like singing, and because it's a musical, so it's all theatrical and singing songs and back and forth and stuff. But like the genres that I kind of really, really wanted to be in there were rap, rock, punk, jazz, blues, and pop. Okay. So like some of those already kind of go together all the time, but like I've never really heard like a punk jazz song. And I think that could potentially be very weird, but if done well, dope. Like, really... okay. I, and like, but so, Ooh. so like, the whole thing is it's very self righteous and self serious. Or like, that's the joke of the show. Like, have you seen the show Burn Notice? I think I've talked yeah. about this before. Yeah, of course. So like, Burn Notice is a bad TV show if you think Burn Notice is trying to be a good TV show. But if you think Burn Notice is trying to be a very, very ridiculous, over the top, silly action movie TV show, it's funny and good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that. So, like, if you think this is, like, trying to be amazing, you're wrong. But if you think it's a very silly thing because it's these gangs also, like, dressed in the most, like, so like when I say like the punk gang is going to be like when you think of like punk from the eighties and nineties, the they look punk. So and they're just is this like and they're all so it's all stereotyped to the max and stuff. But like if you watch the show, so they're just gonna be like diehard like punk punk people, and then like, yeah okay and the diehard like rap people so like the most like pants sagging like like the most 
stereotypical thing for the genre that you've ever seen. It's like all the blues people are gonna like have like freaking like look like they're in like the Rat Pack and stuff like with harmonicas like the whole thing. Yeah. But like also, it's self-serious where like the joke of the thing is that it's serious but it's not. But also, it's just it's just about they, music okay, kind of. Okay. And that's the fighting, whole idea. Like, they're fight. Are they fighting over something in particular? Well, like, I mean, like, we can all. So, like, I mean, what if they? Like, what if they're they're all fighting to get a specific gig or something, or like a venue? Because they're actual gangs, though. It's the thing. They're yeah. not. They're not musical gangs. They're not like. So these aren't all just like. No, they're they're actual they're like gangster actual gangs. gangs. Yes. Singing. So, but <laughs> but it's a musical. Okay. So like. In like different music genres. We okay. have to tell. So we have to tell like an actual gang story. So like I'm assuming. I mean, so it's just like, well, like, one person's, like, stepping on like a person's Like, a brother's thing. gonna, like, one brother's gonna rise to power because the father's dying and the brother's jealous, like a Thor Loki type yeah, of thing. Yeah, or, like, I don't know, one person is kind of a thug and a screw-up and he wants to, like, prove himself and be all, like, a total, like, bad butt, right? Gets this gig. Yeah, gets, and, no. But, yeah. like, or, like, he's, like, I'm gonna, like, freaking, like, go, like, steal, like, this stuff. And it's, yeah. like, not in their territory. Or and something. then completely screws it up. Yeah, so he goes to do that, screws it up, the other gang shows up, so they kill somebody in that gang, and then that gang's like, what the frick, they just mm -hmm. killed my gang person, so we gotta go free and ride on them. And then, like, the gangs that they're partnered with are like, no, screw you, but then there's like all, but they're all criminals, and so they're, they're like backstabbing like... all over the place, and Ooh. it turns into like, so like, the whole town turns into like a war town. All of New York turns into a war zone between these gangs, but also at the same time, they're all singing these different genres and fighting each other. Dude, so is this gonna right. is there gonna be like team ups and stuff? Yes, okay. but okay. also like back steps because they're, no. they're criminals. They're I'm guys. sorry. You've made plenty of jokes during my pitch. Is one of them going to be pop punk and you're just going to hear, Cut my life into pieces. No, because they're all original songs. So, okay, I got this, all right? The, going off, I know you haven't okay. seen The Godfather. Have you seen The Godfather? Um, you know, I feel like okay. I saw the first one, but no, I did not. I was going to say I did, but I haven't. All right, so there's a segment in The Godfather. You know that they're all a bunch of mafia yeah. families and everything. There's a scene in The Godfather. And so kind of going back to your bit where, like, each thing, there's a scene in The Godfather where every mafia head is having it come together and they all have this meeting about how to handle said situation that has developed. I'm not going to spoil it because you, neither of you guys have seen it and you're going to see it eventually. It'll be on the podcast, I'm sure. Yeah. So events, so I'm just thinking it's like, how hilarious it would be in your world to have a a meeting, a come to Jesus meeting with every head of state <laughs> and they're talking. <laughs> but you're like, like, like a round table yeah, and of it's, all these and it's all musical. Yeah, and all and just, then we can yes. we can mix jazz and rock and punk and pop. <laughs> so, like, so it's yes. <laughs> So when you say mix it like that, it's like one person's gonna sing like a, a phrase or a musical phrase or whatever, another person's gonna sing a phrase in the same song, but it's gonna one person's gonna be punk, one person's gonna be jazz. Yeah. Okay. And then we find out oh, the, the, the music. Yes. Wait, well, so like Marcus, Marcus, I have a very important. Okay. As a musician, can I write your score? Can I write your no. score? No. But here's the thing. <laughs> that would complete shutdown. Be so much right away. Way. Because, no offense, Ian. I do not know of any composers that exist who can effectively <laughs> write all write those good, good genres. Who can effectively write a good song in all of those genres, but let me do you one further. Who can write one good song that has all of those genres in it? See, so, like, I know very few writers who I think could write, like, a good rap song and a good jazz song and a good this song. Is there any yeah. artists out there that, like, mix I don't know, Zach Brown. I don't know any artist who can write all of those genres into one song and make it as funny and effective as I want it to be. I, I, I would say Zach Brown is the closest to that. Because he mixes, you, like, jazz and blues. Yeah, and he mixes yeah. jazz, blues, country, and rock. And yeah. so if, if you watch... I swear if any country's in my show... <laughs> oh, no, 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 they're just giving one lone guy. Well, he's not, he's like... <laughs> and then he gets cast. We, 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 yeah. we hear somebody play a very aggressively bad six-string yes. chord. Yes. And he has a hat on it. And there's <laughs> somebody just cast him. He's just gonna be sitting there playing yeah. yeah. <laughs> he gets murdered in a drive-by in episode one, and then... <laughs> Wait, is this a series? Yeah, no, it's a TV show. Okay. Oh, man, that... I'm so really I'm so game for this. I'm like, totally that's, game. That's, for that's, this. Such 
a Marcus idea that I was like, oh, this would be so cool. I was like, but I bet most people hate it because it's freaking weird and stupid. But like, I'm a fan of it. I think the reason why it's so weird and so outlandishly stupid, as you called it, is why it would garner so much traction behind it. It would be a niche audience. Like it would be a very niche thing. I would. I don't I think, think it would. I think, I think no, it would start out that way, and then everyone would talk about it. Is like because everybody Thrones. would have their favorite yeah, I, like I, genre yeah, and, think, and favorite game. And I yeah. think just the idea that if somebody, can you honestly say that if your friend at work walked up to you and said, "Dog, I'm watching this show. It's a musical TV show about a gang war." where each gang is in a different genre of music, Dude. and they infuse all of them together, you'd be like, no way. You like, can't no, pitch it's it's like that to other people, people, though. And they're like, no, no, you tell somebody that, they're like, no way, and be like, no, it's a thing that exists, and they'd be like, bull crap, and you're like, you gotta watch, you gotta, you have, at that point, you will then watch the show out of spite to prove you're like, no, it's not, there's no way, wait, mm-hmm. you're telling me it's a thing that actually exists. It's one of those things that someone would talk about, you would hear about it so much that you would have to watch it yeah. just to see what all the buzz is about. Because then, it's so silly. And then once you see it, then you're like, I get it. This, is, this rocks. This is a, such a weird thing that is very <laughs> special. That's my whole idea, though. Like, <laughs> that's, that's killer. Oh, boy. Thank you. I like it. I'm a fan. <laughs> I kind of want to cast these. Like, yeah, I mean, like... The cast, the heads of state okay. of each genre yeah, would you, would as you? as like the the pinnacle of rock and roll right now, or yeah, the pinnacle I, of pop punk and you know stuff like that, that. That brings up a point too. Like, would you cast specific like musical icons to where like the the, the the leader I mean, of the the leader of the gang that's in now. pop music would be like Justin Bieber. No, I, I, I think no, no, never Justin Bieber. Just, I, that was just a, that was just a, a no. yeah. Because here's the like, thing. Let's do it. Actually, this sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I was about to wrap up the show. Let's do it. So pop, obviously the king of pop for our generation. Like okay, assuming, Justin, like, assuming Justin Michael Jackson was alive. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, of course. Michael Jackson's dead. So Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake's the king of pop for my generation. I would argue. Yeah. No. For so, sure. So I, for the I, pop I, gang, I, Justin Timberlake. Um, Justin Timberlake. Okay. Or are, are you sure? What about Ed Sheeran? No. No. Because Ed Sheeran does too many like. Uh, Ed Sheeran makes good. Okay, so. <laughs> so it's not like no really. offense to Justin, because I do love myself a lot of Justin Timberlake. <laughs> okay. But the type of pop music that Justin Timberlake makes and the type of pop. Music that Ed Sheeran makes are different oh, things. Like Ed Sheeran's you, you more of an acoustic. I, I, was thinking, I was thinking of the other Justin. Justin Bieber still? Yeah, I was still no. thinking of Justin Bieber. My no. bad. No, no. Yes, I mean, yes, Justin, Justin Timberlake, Timberlake is, the, is the king of pop for my generation. Yes, I yes. agree. I agree. My bad. Yes. And very good. So, so and I then mean, I think what you said about Zach Brown would be good, but he would you put him in blues? I, I would put him in blues. Um, he like can do, he can do everything, but I would have to put him in blues if you're going to be a genre specific, um, or I would just cast him as a musical director of the show. And then okay for the punk, I've been listening to this band called Street Dogs. Uh, shoot, what's his name? Lead singer Dropkick Murphys. Yeah, he started this punk group called Street Dogs. Oh. Gonna look him up now. He would be a good he'd be a good guy for uh, for the punk. Genre. I'm thinking rap because there's really no famous punk. Punkers or anything. Eminem. Every, everyone. Eminem, yeah. Or, or like, we go good. <laughs> Dude. At, and at, cast Kendrick Lamar. Oh, see, I'm, I'm a little bit... See, I don't listen to a lot of rap. See, so see I, Kendrick I, Lamar I is him. big right now. But whereas Eminem, Eminem has been more, big for decades. Yeah, and Eminem and, also... New album sucks. What's that? I said Eminem's new album also. I haven't listened to it. Sucks. But, but, uh, but the thing is that if you talk to anyone within the rap community, I think they would say, yeah, like Kendrick no, Lamar is. Kendrick Lamar is, is so right over now. right now. No, because oh. here's the thing Kendrick Lamar, I think, is going to be pound for pound one of the best rappers of all time. Like, he will go down in, in like a blaze of glory, like. I'm saying I'm not gonna say like, as over and uh, I keep saying over because I've been talking to my brother about wrestling, which makes mm-hmm. me mad. But um, he he will go down as like a Tupac esque person where people will be like Kendrick Lamar because Kendrick Lamar is so good. Um, and I also think that like yeah, Mike McColgan is the guy from Dropkick from Street Dogs. We have to also um, uh, 
If we wanted to go silly with it, we could also try to cast Mark Hoppus or Tom DeLonge. Um, Who are they? The uh, Mark Hoppus is from Blink. 182. Uh, Tom, no, that would, yeah, that would make it too long. You could take it seriously. You're not supposed to take it seriously. The idea of the show is the show takes itself seriously. seriously. Okay, you okay. never take the show seriously. All right. So, Which actually, I would argue that, that we're, not, we're not supposed to take it seriously, but the show does, and it would be a better cast. Because <laughs> I, think, I, think, yeah. I think it would be much easier to watch a show and not take Eminem seriously, but have Eminem, I think he would he, sell, he, he would, would sell the seriously. idea yeah. of he takes it the most seriously yeah. better than yes. Kendrick would. So yes, let's go with Eminem. Um, um, and then for like hip hop, would you go like- No, we already said Eminem. Yeah, but that's for rap. I mean, yeah, we're only yeah. doing that. Is there gonna oh, be rap? Because okay. rap and hip hop yeah, no, are different. I mean, they're, they, 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 yeah, they're but different, they're, but they are sim- I, I won't say that they're similar enough for our rock for our rap and hip hop fans out there. Okay. But to the cast, I was thinking like okay for hip hop you could go like someone like really old school like Easy E and I wouldn't yeah. consider him a rapper like Eminem is. Yeah. Because he he's more like there is a difference there. But the genres are rap, rock, jazz, blues. Okay. For the sake of this we'll combine okay. Okay. So rock. I I mean I you, you know what my Dave Girl is. dude. Yeah. I'm sorry, we're both Dave Girl fans, so we're teaming up on you on this. <laughs> I, Dave Grohl is the greatest me, rock and roller Let me alive. pitch this to you. Uh, currently alive. Hold yeah. on. Let me pitch this to you. Because it is a show that takes itself seriously, but you're not supposed to. And let me let me tell you this quick story. I know of a band where they wanted the lead singer's voice to sound different for this album. And they said, how do we make that happen? So they said, let's get him just amped. Freaking like amped out of his mind. And they're like, how do we do that? So what they essentially did was LARPed in the recording studio and freaking after they would like fight and like the lead singer would like as an elf murder an orc with a broadsword they then go directly into singing <laughs> the song because he'd be amped out of his mind. I think that artist, that Jesus. specific dude would be so weird on camera but also if we could get him to buy into the idea would be so into it that it'd be Amazing to watch, and he's also, I think it'd be a little bit weird and off-putting because like he's a gangster, he's a sheepish small man who's not very intimidating. Who is Rivers this? Cuomo. <laughs> okay, I'll the give you that. Of, of I'll give you that because I feel like he would be a Lisa. better. Oh. Like he would get into it more. Dave Grohl yes, is cool, but Dave Grohl, I don't think, like, I think that get we, into the theatricalness. Yes, of it. if we could get Rivers into this thing, I think he'd be so into it. <laughs> yeah, which is why I would argue for Rivers. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. Which album was that that they did that? Early. <laughs> Early. <laughs> that's one of my favorite things. Like, I'm going to listen to her the now after thinking of that. Like, I'm, I'm yeah, it's that. real weird and good, and I like that a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll give so you we that have, one. So we have pop, we have rock, we have punk, we have jazz. Wait, we do not no, have we don't jazz. have jazz. We have blues. And yeah. wait, so and jazz did you decide on punk? Was it going to be the guy from Blink? No. Oh, or from Street Do we dogs. want it? Yeah, do we want it? Like, I thought the Street Dog there would be, but Blink do might be Do we want to do more. Tom DeLonge? I think if we can <laughs> do Tom Blake, DeLonge. People are going to know him more. It's going to be, yeah. yeah do, we'll go with that. Because Tom DeLonge is also the person, if you don't know anything about Blink 182, when you hear the person who sounds like a really whiny baby and also like they have an accent, yeah. it's Tom DeLonge. And he doesn't have an accent in real life. Yeah. I, I mean, I would argue Blink-182 Blink is more pop punkish, kind of not well, like, yeah, like, like, if like you wanted to go loosely. really hardcore punk, yes. maybe, but I think he could pull it off, we could do that. Okay, and then we so don't have jazz, right? We need jazz, and I yes. know nothing about jazz. So, yeah, do like, I, no, jazz no, I got it. Duke Silver. <laughs> so, when, when I think From of- Carson Rick. No. Uh, when I think of jazz, I don't think of any music with, uh, I don't think of any music with lyrics in it. What if we just pick a ball and saxophone player? Well, okay. He so, doesn't say anything so, ever. So so then in that case you like won't literally be, like Duke Silver from Parks and Rec. In, in that but case a real person. In that case then you would want Marcel I can't remember the last name. His brother's is Winton Marcellus and he played he's a trumpeteer. Oh okay, what if the jazz game doesn't say anything? Like, <laughs> yeah. What if they're the trumpet <laughs> positions? What if they're the ones that they just actually play, play they're music? Just playing music, dog. <laughs> yes. And like they what might everyone else everything? just like, sings it, else. they're all super they're like they're kind of posers. None of them actually play music. No, they play like like music. It's the, gonna be scored. Yeah, obviously. But, but they but they sing it. But none of them actually play music. But the jazz. 
They're, the jazz they're group, they don't sing. Instruments. They just play instruments. They're like, they think of themselves as the true musicians. <laughs> so then in that case, I would have to say Wynton Marsalis and Arturo Sandoval. And they could be okay. they could be brothers and co in charge. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 uh, what I mean, that's I'm, what started it all was because they're brothers, they're co in charge. So, oh, oh, okay. J- just for a spoiler alert, when Marsalis is black and then Arturo Sandoval is Mexican, so they can't really. No, they're biological <laughs> brothers. And we don't explain. <laughs> yes, yes, we don't explain. Yes, yes. yes. We yes. talk about like, we don't explain. We talk about. Uh, we show a picture. <laughs> at one point, we show a picture of their parents. We talk about how they're not adopted. Both their parents are white. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it's just, it's just a thing that exists in the world. Yes, <laughs> that, that 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 is that exists. That's a, solely that's a, that's to a joke for us. <laughs> yes, it's not a joke for the show. It's a joke for us. <laughs> Oh, let's wrap up the show. Though. That's a lot yeah, of fun. I, my idea was real fun. I enjoyed this. I I like that a lot. Man. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This, I, I, I'm, I'm giddy now. I'm my totally thing, giddy. My thing that makes me the most mad about this show is sometimes I will we'll talk about a thing so much and I'll get amped like it's a thing that exists. Yeah. And like, we can go watch it. This doesn't exist. I can't go watch <laughs> this thing, even though I wish I could so hard oh, right now. Do yeah. we have any genre not covered? That's all the genres. That's all the genres? Okay. So we have not Eminem for rap, off. Justin Timberlake for pop, Yes. River Cuomo for rock, whoever you said for jazz. Uh, Wynton Marsalis and Arturo Sandoval. Blues is Zach Brown. Yeah. Or or Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton could be good for blues as well. Sorry, throwing out that, but Zach Brown. I don't know who that is. Zach, Zach Brown's Brown. the, the guy from Zach Brown Band, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. My brother in law's the biggest Zach Brown man. You know, I know. Me. Yeah. Freaking, he's so into him. I'm like, I. Who? My brother in law. Um, Jared. Yeah. Oh, okay, Jared, yeah. Jared's yeah. the most into Zach yeah, Brown. Yeah, I, I have every, every single band. one of their songs that they've ever put on. They're good. They're, he's really good. Every album, he's too. A, even the greatest okay, hits albums. Before we start movie. talking about freaking Zach Brown, man, let's end the yeah, show. Yeah, this is like, yeah. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That could be for the after show. <laughs> All right. Um, after, oh, that's another thing. There's going to be a pre-show on Patreon. Uh, so if you support Patreon, you can get access to the pre-show as well. Also, thanks for watching. Yeah, so anyway, thanks for watching the show. This is... Let me pitch this to you. This is Let Me Pitch This To You. And again, like, this is a podcast that is super niche and weird, but also, like, the idea of this podcast is, like... It's just pitching ideas. I'm, I'm the most proud of the idea of this podcast of anything I've ever done creatively. Like, as I, this is not going to be the podcast that gets famous or popular, ever. Yeah. But this is the podcast that, like, pound for pound, I'm the most, like, creatively fulfilling to me. So, like, yeah. anybody yeah. who watches the show, like, I know it's not, we don't have, like, a following, like, except for, like, maybe six people, but, like, I I appreciate those six people so much because this is the most creatively fulfilling thing yeah. I've ever done in my life. So, anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. You can email us at letmepitchthistoo.gmail.com. You can text Vote. us now. The Send in ideas in to the, description. the text or yeah. email. Um, that's it. Should we do finger guns? Ready? I forgot about the dab till just now. That's such a dumb idea. <laughs> Trapped in their beds That's when I'm free Thanks to Booty, 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 booty pajamas Booty, 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 booty pajamas Booty, 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 booty